Hello, everybody. Welcome to our 18th SG STEM. And uh, for this week, we have Fire Girl MJ. We know her from her really fun and funny videos, uh, Coel Calls, which really things can be improved upon. So uh, MJ is going to tell us about science edutainment and how we can use social media to entertainment as well as education. And we can do raising awareness. So uh, MJ, take it away. Okay. Hi, everyone. Okay, let me share my PowerPoint slide. Oh, this will stop you guys. Oh, it's okay, right? Yeah, yeah it's fine. I've stopped sharing. <laughs> oh, yay. Okay. Okay, let me click this. Oh. oh, right. You guys can see. Is it full screen? Is it on full screen? We can see the slide like just now. Oh, okay. So, hi, everyone. Um, um, my name is Faugo MJ. So today I'll be sharing a bit more about my channel, uh, what we aim to do, what we have been doing, and what we hope to achieve. And also a little bit more insights to so the social media industry, which is very interesting, especially if you have no idea how it works, <laughs> which was like me when I first started uh, doing this channel. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, who are we? Just keep thinking, we are the science and nature and edutainment channel in Singapore. So yeah, that's me in my avatar form, with me in my science lab code. So this word, edutainment, it's really interesting. It's up and coming. So what does edutainment exactly mean? Okay, wait, wait, so how does it sound like? Okay, so there's a pronunciation like sound bite here. So I click on it. Edutainment. Yes, so that's how edutainment reads. <laughs> edutainment is actually a combination of words, uh, mainly educate and to entertain. So it's about using media designed to educate through entertainment and often includes content intended to teach, but has also incidental entertainment value. So some can be really obvious, some you know, are not. So if I play games, science games in my class, I think they, they kind of know it's going to be a science game. <laughs> and they're like, oh, can we play something else? I'm like, no, we got to play this. Yeah, so it can be used by academia, governments, teachers to disseminate information via media outlets. And one interesting thing word here, interesting word that you can see here is this word Disney. So this term actually is being used by Disney as early as 1954. So he used it to create this black and white film about dental hygiene. You know, like this person brushes her teeth, this person didn't brush his teeth and you know, one gets to decay and one doesn't. So that's how it all kickstarted. Okay, so just a history of Just Keep Thinking and how we actually came up with this idea. Uh, I'm, anyone would like to guess? So this is like the, the little timeline that I used icons to represent. Uh, those, for those who know, like through watching our interviews, please don't answer, but would anyone like to try <laughs> and guess how this timeline works? Should I pick from people like I do in my class? Gretel's oh, yeah, evolution. Yeah. I'll pick on you, Marcus or Canada. I'll just pick on both of you. No, not me. I wasn't paying attention. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think it's... Um, I don't know what the third picture is, though. Or the first um, picture. So is it like some kind of cells? It becomes a coconut drink? <laughs> Oh, first one looks like um, coral, coral polyps to me. Second one, yes. Mm. Yeah, coral. Uh, second one, coconut. Uh, third one looks like, I don't know, it looks like a nest of some kind. And then, of course... Yeah, it looks like a weaver bird's nest, bird. yeah. <gasps> okay, okay, okay. Very good, very good. Okay, so... Yeah, oh, actually, I think, yeah, you guys are right. So, the first is actually... Oh, wait. Okay. Ray, your partner, says you found fish scale in coconut. After drinking it, you grew your lung and the channel is formed. Ah! <laughs> okay, okay. Let's ignore him. So uh, the first one is actually like coral light. So they are individual coral polyps. And it's quite obvious after the coral dies and it you know, gets washed up on shore. So this actually, the story is that we were in this, we were on a trip to Philippines and we're waiting to go out for a snorkeling trip. Yeah, and while waiting for, you know, the preparation and the boat, there were a lot of co dead corals around. So I just, me and my co-founder, we were there, and I just picked it up and started just blabbering, you know, educational 
things to him, like how I do on my videos. So I was like, hey, there's a cover lights. Oh, Prof Todd actually made us measure everything just to, you know, find out how the rate of growth is. And then it goes on and on. Yeah, so that was, I think that sparked something in him. Yeah. And then uh, there, came the, there comes the coconut. So after the snorkeling tree, we were on this tuk-tuk on the way back, you know, to our villa. And it's, it's not, not villa, it's actually quite a cheap place. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I still knew I'm very rich. No, no, no. Then uh, I was sleeping on this coconut, you know, like just drinking happily. But he was so quiet beside me, like deep in thought, you know, like, like this. Then I was looking at him, like, what's going on? Did I say something wrong just now? Are you angry with me? <laughs> He's like, no. Whatever you spoke just now, we can do something about it. And I was just drinking on my coconut. Oh, okay, okay, can. Yeah, so, and then he pitched to me the idea, and when we were back in Singapore, we filmed our first episode, which is uh, In Search of the Baya Weaver's Nest in Coney Island. We used to have a lot, but now it's actually, it was so difficult to find. We almost couldn't find it, you know, and then I found it at the very last moment. I was so happy, yeah. Uh, and we published that as our first episode. And why I put that our channel, like, appeared, you know, at the very last course, it was when I realized, when we realized that this episode was very well received, people liked our content, it was a sus substantial number, 13,000 views within just one week for our first ever video with a really very small following. Uh, and that's where we decided to, you know, we can take this even further and we'll put a lot more effort into it to try and make this work. And so we started in late August 2019. So it's been a little more than a year. Today. Oh, look at my, my, oh, yay. Okay, wait, let me, let me try again. Can you all see? Yay, we are born. It's fireworks. Yeah, I took half an hour to learn the fireworks animation. But. <laughs> so our goal here is we hope to share knowledge in a very lighthearted and bite-sized manner. Because um, frankly, that's how social media tends to work, especially if you want to hit um, a big part, a big portion of consumers, especially mainstream ones who are not out there to find such information. So that is our goal. And this is recently new. We didn't really have this vision in the beginning, but our vision is to change hearts and minds through the power of social media. So this only came after we have been around for a year and we realized the impact of what we can do. And then, so yeah, we started thinking big. It's always good to think ahead. So we think that it can actually really shift the whole how people view you know, nature and industry and how we can work towards it. And it will definitely have a very positive impact if we can change heart and minds you know, in terms of climate change issues, you know, global, global issues basically, yes. So, and this is our team. So I'm Biogo MJ, I'm the video host, the noisy girl. <laughs> and I'm also actually a science teacher. So I, I just like science in general. I, although people kind of know me for my nature and wildlife things that I do. But yeah, I'm generally very interested in science and I actually graduate with environmental biology. Yeah, so they, people like to ask like what credentials I have. Yeah, so I work a lot in education sector. So mainly, um, I mean, I graduated with life, environmental biology and then I work in NPARC, the Conchie Natural History Museum, Wildlife Reserve Singapore hopping around but i'm now just a science teacher yeah so and then this guy here he's, he's his name is ray but we call him supreme leader r yeah it's like he's the silent leader of the group as well like he plays a very important role <laughs> so we call him supreme leader and he doesn't he doesn't show his face at all in the videos which was very interesting because everyone is trying to find out who he is and then people are just some, got, like, i think there's one follower who was very frustrated that he couldn't see who ray was <laughs> and i was like why are you so upset? <laughs> like, chill. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so he's a videographer. He's also a content strategist. So he will think how we can actually communicate it better to mainstream audiences. And he's also, he's also a social media specialist. So that's where I get my bulk of my social media, media knowledge from. Okay, oh, next, next, next. So our platforms, we are mainly on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, the numbers seem to tell you really nicely <laughs> as of now. Uh, and we are also on YouTube and TikTok. But yeah, our following is not so great. So I'm just going to go put the nice one, the nice numbers there. And it's only for, it's only been a little more than a year, but we managed to gain quite a following from the content that we do. So here are some of the contents. I'm not sure if you guys seen it before. So this is the soft shell crack episode that went viral in terms of our videos. So it's 700,000 reach. And then next one is this surgical mask. My goodness, it was 15 million. It went around the world. 
Yeah, so people started stealing our stuff, which is it was the first time I've experienced like literally stealing without even crediting and but some actually modified it, you know, like the format and everything, which was quite cool. Like I saw different versions, it was really nice. And last but not least, the Turtle versus Tortoise video, 2.8 million. I mean, you cannot compare to 15 million, but it's not too bad also, like, huh? 2.8 million. <laughs> so these are some of our achievements. And before I move on, um, I would like everyone to try out this poll. Okay, so what is this animal? So this photo of an animal here, and okay, they are all minus, right? So which, you know, what minor is this? Please don't, don't, don't answer in the chat. I'll, I'll, I'll do the poll. Did anyone answer in the chat? No, right, no, right. Okay, okay. Let me relaunch the poll. So you can submit your answers. Uh, this is not part of the trivia quiz. It's just my own poll and you are, it's anonymous. So I won't be able to scold you if you get wrong. It is frustrating even for my kids because I have no idea who answered wrongly. <laughs> okay, let's give a bit more. 10 seconds. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait till about six, 70%. Oh, 75% have voted. We could wait until oh. 80. Oh, okay. Woohoo. Very good. Very good. Who never answer? Okay, never mind. So, okay, okay, okay. Let's end the polling first. And I, let me share the results. <gasps> Interesting. Okay, so, so this is the result. Most of you pick 50% pick number two. 32% pick number three and one person, one pick like one and four. Okay, so the answer is, yeah, I should answer? Oh, wait. I click next. So the answer is actually the common minor. So you can actually identify from the yellow eye patch there. So those who pick one, two, and four, it's okay. There's another, there's another, <laughs> there's another poll. So the next question is, out of these four minors, which is no longer found in Singapore, or at least has not been seen like in a really long time. But let me relaunch the polling. So again, one, two, three, four, please make your votes. Mm. It's very weird eh. From what I see the result, did someone, did some, some people troll just now. Like why the why is everyone answering correctly now? <laughs> hey, okay. Uh, okay, 79. Okay, let me let me just show the results. So yes, most of you actually picked number one. So yes, it's the crested miner. So it was actually introduced here via Patrick um in the 1980s. Uh, actually, I'm not sure when, but I know it kind of it was last seen, last reported seen in 1990s and yeah, since then it has not been found in Singapore, but the rest you can still find it. So the common ones that we see are Javan miners. Well, no, not common one, the, the one previously. I mean, the photo here is the common miner, which yeah, is very ironic. <laughs> okay, let me stop share the results. So I think from here, um, what we can see is that uh, assuming that the previous ones are trolls, okay, I'm not that sure, but for there's this gap that I've noticed um, in the community when it comes to you know the population and science and nature in general. So uh, while um, my days while I'm studying in NUS and I'm going participating in all this you know nature stuff, uh, I realized that in any activity in any talks, it's always the big portion of it is always people who already uh, are in in the nature like just like in nature industry they actually know a lot about it, and I I mean that is nice to have us gathering around and sharing our thoughts and making friends and seeing your friends again and again in the same surrounding, but. Why I was thinking that, you know, we need to um, influence a larger crowd. So this crowd that we should be involving is are the crowd that is the crowd that are not interested or even resistant to the idea of like science and nature and you know even climate change. You know, people who tell me that they don't care about the environment, they're just gonna use as much plastic as they can. They don't really care if the earth heats up, which is not uncommon if you meet people who dares to tell you what they really feel. <laughs> so people tend to just keep quiet if they know you're like an activist or you care about environment, they won't dare to say. But I don't think I appear as that in, to my audience or to my friends. So they usually tell me their real feelings, which I appreciate a lot because I can see where the loopholes are. And also this group of people jumping on the bandwagon, which is, I think is very new in recent times. So what do I mean about this is, 
because um, you know the issue of climate change, uh, environmentalism is taking on a greater stage now, especially going into the 21st century. And there's a lot of motions and hypes going around. Uh, so, uh, some are, they definitely come from a good intention. So one example I can think is like the metal straw one. So, you know, the video of the you know, sea turtle and then everyone goes on to use metal straw, which um, it comes from a very good intention. And I think the switch that people make, um, they are trying to do good as well. But here comes the problem when people are buying into this hype and they're just joining because it's fun. And then companies started to buy into this hype also. And that's what, um, there's a term for it, it's called greenwashing, which actually a lot of my nature and environment and they are very worried about, about because, I mean, it starts to get very obvious when businesses are doing that. And then what happens is, uh, I actually have a group of, I have a lot of friends that actually bought metal straw, but they don't use it to the amount where it actually makes sense. Yeah, I actually, actually not sure how many times you've used it before. You know, it's you know it makes sense that you know you're actually reducing the plastic for it. Like there's a certain number for it, but I'm not very sure. But it's just lying down there in the office for one or two years, and they're not using it, but they're continually continually using plastic straws. So when that happens, right, it's actually it can cause more harm than good when this kind of jumping on a bandwagon happens. Yeah, I mean some people they do become more aware of the climate and they do really change their ways, but I think we all know that a good majority doesn't do that actually. Yes. So what Just Keep Thinking hopes to do is that we want to, we notice this gap and we want to build this bridge to nurture and innate this innate desire and love for the earth, for science. Yeah, so by doing that, we can be more informed and make informed and sensible decisions. And they'll be more committed to, you know, when they do this, when they buy the material, they, they are going to use it. They're going to bring it around all the time. They will commit to washing it instead of just leaving it somewhere, you know, and it's pretty. <laughs> and yeah, it's like, you know, the galaxy metal straw. I was like, oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. So, and then we can also have more constructive discussions. So this happens when people who, you know, and they jump into this, you know, let's save the forest thing, but they get very toxic. They start criticizing people who share alternative views. And then when that happens, you shun people away, right? Like, and then how are we gonna convince people to join this side if we are gonna be so rude? I mean, it can be rude, like, I mean, from what I see on social media, it can be quite toxic. So, you know, we, we should have a constructive discussion and see how we can move on, we can compromise. And that will, I, I think it will help to create a better world. So yes, so what JKT aims to do is first to pick people's interests here. So, this is really important because if you even can't get people to listen to you, right, whatever you say next, right, it doesn't matter anymore. So, which is why I kind of showed the numbers. I mean, I howl in a bit, lah, yeah, but it's because at least whatever we put out, right, people listen. Whatever they want to do with it afterwards, that's another issue. But, you know, the first thing is to capture their interest because without that, right, <laughs> I mean, if people don't even listen to you, then there's no point for you talking anymore. Yeah, it's like if my kids are sleeping, no matter how good I teach, they're not going to listen and they're not going to learn. So I have to like wake them up. Yeah. So, and this is important because next on, it comes the spark. I like to call it the spark because I think for people who are really very invested in nature, we have this moment where we realize that, oh my God, this is something I want to do. This is something I want to protect. This is something I want to be really involved in. Yeah, so for me, it was a very fun field trip in St. John Islands, you know, where I went to do the intertidal war, I went to the terrestrial, it's very long ago, it was like, yeah, during my JC day, so that was a spark for me. And it comes in many forms, some people, they actually got it, like, just by having a camp in the zoo, by watching a documentary, yeah, so maybe it could be our videos, I mean, I think from the comments, I feel like some people got the spark from our videos, whether they really do have it, I'm not that sure, like, I can't follow up, but that would be great. So once they have a spark, then they will naturally want to learn more. They will find out more themselves. And that's where they can really dive deeper into the really big information about, you know, the issues they are concerned with. Uh, they will learn more from real legit blogs that has more information compared to ours, like I would say. And last but not least, that's where they will have the love. And that connects the bridge. And this love is really important because even though this whole bridge is a long shot, right? It's like a long-term strategy, but it, I know it will last and it's going to be permanent and it's not a bandwagon thing at all. 
and it is real. So I I feel that yeah, this is what we are really trying to do in the long run. I mean, in short, we just try and get people interested lah. But there's a long term <laughs> plan for it. So and so the first part, the interest part, getting a big following is really important because it will trickle down. You know, like you might get the interest, but the spark might not be there. The spark might be there. They might not want to learn and so on and so forth. You know, like how ten percent on the energy just get down the energy chain. Yeah, so something like that. It will trickle down lah. So. That's why a big following is actually quite important. And so now I move on to why social media. So this is the statistic for Singapore. Uh, social media, we 88% of our population actually uses. Oh, why did I go? Okay, yeah. The internet. And we spend six hours and 48 minutes on average every single day on the internet. No wonder we have myopia. Okay, so yeah. Uh, moving on. Okay, so. This is that is for Singapore as well, uh, taken in January 2020. I mean, that's the latest I could find. <laughs> the most used social platform. So Facebook comes really big. I mean, they've been here for the longest time. And then comes YouTube. Uh, what's that? Facebook, uh, WeChat. Okay, that one is just, you know, like messaging. We shall not get into that. There's Instagram coming next. TikTok. Can you guys imagine? They were here only for like one year ago. What, what, two years ago, but they only picked up one year ago. And... Yeah, they they're on their way. I could easily envision them just like <laughs> being all the way to the top quite quickly. Uh, Qzone, Sina, Weibo, is they all China, like social media. I don't know why they read it. Snapchat, Twitter. Twitter is actually not doing as high because I think it's difficult. Like, the amount of entertainment you get from Twitter is different. But I know a lot of nature people like to use it because you share a lot. You share information between scientists on Twitter. So... But I think maybe if you really want to go like full social media, Twitter might not be the best platform. And some of the big players in social media, I, I'm sure you guys know of them. So Titan Digital Media is like Tian Hao Tan, Night Hour Cinematics, uh, Mothership SGAG, they are, they are bigger companies that do a variety. They have influencers within inside, but they also do a lot of bigger scale corporate you know, B2B and stuff. And these two, uh, yeah, one, one, this woman here is a bit controversial. But they have their own following. So this is Sneaky Sushi, this guy here. You, you guys might not know him, but he's an up and rising YouTube star on yeah, YouTube star based in Singapore. And he just talks about stuff. Like he really just talks about issues, but he's very funny. That's why people like him. <laughs> and he talks about difficult issues. Lah. And then I, Xiaxue, I think everyone knows Xiaxue. So uh, a lot of things about that she said that I don't agree with. But one thing that I can say that I respect about her is that how how just straightforward she is and she doesn't change herself, you know, like no matter what people say about her, she's not gonna, oh, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have said that. No, she just goes all the way. And that's quite, that takes a big courage to do it, which is why she has a very loyal following and why she can sustain all the way to this day. And then you have very niche players, like, you know, what, what salary men, uh, they do finance at, um, advisement, eh, finance advisement, they give financial advisement, you know, to the mainstream population. And I was a big fan of them. I'm really happy to, Know that they like our channel as well and we actually met and became friends yeah i'm really happy <laughs> and there's daniel food diary so he does blog posts on food so very very niche areas so they can be generalists like you know the, the top four they are they do a variety of stuff but, and they can be specialists but they have their own following of people and they know what works for them and sometimes you know uh, what they do might not agree with you but they are looking at the big picture and their numbers is always very important. And to them, they have a big following, which is why I feel that, you know, whenever you go about top content creators or influencers in Singapore, right? They have categories, but there's never a category for science or nature. <laughs> there's finance already, you know, there's like, um, food. there's food, there's lifestyle, there's fashion, there's entertainment, celebrities, but there's actually not one for nature and science. Cause I think we don't really connect them, both of them together, but for just keeping things like, why not? Why not we take how these players do it and we can apply it to science as well and make it work. And I think we did. Okay, so um, not sure if you guys know who they are. I hope you guys know. If you guys don't know, it's a bit, it's a bit too much already, right? Uh, yeah, so big already. So, and then, uh, okay, so, uh, okay, let me just ask Marcus Kanan, do you all know who they are? I'm not gonna say first because I have no idea who they are. Oh really? 
Yeah. Oh, really? Look, ah? Looks like Kelly Sylvia Nas. Maka si Spice Girls. Maka si Nah, are they, are they Black Sink? Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. But they are not yeah. only Black Sink. Yeah. They recently had some uh, climate change video, right? No, they they are your freaking ambassadors for UN climate change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they 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 spoke up about climate change. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll yeah. Okay, so um, one thing I have to say, right? I I'm a big fan of Blackpink. I follow their songs since their first album, their first performance. I watch a lot of their videos. Never have I once saw them talk about climate change until now. But I don't see this as I see this actually a very strategic move, because I think um uh, whoever in charge of this UN thing knows that. They need someone influential in the sense there's a big following. So when they actually posted that UN climate change video, right? Within one week, I think it hit a good, or was it one month, it hit one million. One million views, it just, and then you look at the comments, everyone's just like, yes, let's do our best for climate change. Okay, whether they do something or not, that's another story. But just capturing people's interest and list, getting people to listen to them, they actually did like for one million people already. So I think, you know, the lessons they know that, so out of all the people they could choose, they actually chose Blackpink, which is quite strategic. It's, I was like, yeah, quite smart of you to do that. So um, just a few tips that I could give. I mean, I'm just in you know, this industry for a short time, but what I could say is know your goals about what you want to do. So um, my goal is to share information in a very, very uh, bite-sized and light-hearted manner. And that's because of the audience that I'm targeting. So if your goal is to really just share really, really a lot of information and you don't care about following and then just go ahead. Yeah, like if you get small following, don't, don't be too upset about it because that wasn't your goal to begin with unless you have another goal. And if you want to be famous, it's okay to say you want to be famous. I think there's, there's this negative thing about saying that you want to be famous. I'm not sure how, the, how it's a positive way to put it, but there's good and bad of being famous. And one of the good things is like, I mean, you look at black things like, People actually really listen to what you have to say. So it's, it's not too bad, you know. That's like one of the key things that you have to do while trying to get into this media industry. Um, second is to know your strength. Um, if you're really knowledgeable, you give a lot of information, then just exploit that advantage, you know, especially when you do videos. I mean, it's okay to give information loaded videos. Uh, there's a way to make it interesting as well. But for me, I think my videos, it's mainly due to my personality and how I react on set. Uh, and just a heads up that whatever you see in the videos, I, it's 100% me. I, I don't fake it. <laughs> I, I think I'm quite a funny person. I don't know. Like, if you need to go on a road trip, right, you should bring me along. I'm going to make it like super fun. And we will just laugh all the way. Like, yeah. So, and I'm really very passionate about sharing a lot of things to my kids, to my friends. So that is my strength. Yeah, so I think I recently saw a few videos, I'm not sure if they're trying to be funny or they saw like, you know, how Just Keeping is doing and they're trying to imitate. But it was weird because I I feel that the guy wasn't genuinely funny. He was just trying. Oh no, I said the guy, okay, never mind. Which is very cringy because if you're not funny and trying to be funny, it's going to be really weird. It's not something like you act to be nice. It's funny. It's just a whole other. And then I feel it's a bit sad because you don't get the amount of following you should. So I think if you only want to go you know, the food, the end, you can just go ahead. I think there will, there will be a following for that as well. So you don't have to force yourself to be someone that you are not. Yeah. And last but not least is to know your audience. Um, uh, this is really important. Yeah, so uh, especially because my audience is this group of people who doesn't know, doesn't care, may not want to care at all. It's actually really difficult to change their mindsets that easily or get them, you know, to look at our, our things, so, which is why we keep our stuff, you know, small, lighthearted and bite-sized. And we leave out a lot of details because people actually don't like details. <laughs> you know, imagine you are, you just ended work, you're really tired on the MRT. You really just want to be entertained. You really don't want to look at any more information. And they don't care about scientific name. They don't care whether it's italicized. They really don't care any of those. So it's going to be, you know, quick and fast, but that's because they are my target audience. So it really depends on who you are trying to attract. And just ending this on a really happy note, some happy moments for just keep thinking and the work that we do that really makes me happy and moving, you know, keep moving forward. So um, like overseas fans, wow, I didn't expect that. So this guy here, the one is from Instagram. I think he's from Spain, Spanish. I don't know, it was, I don't remember. It was, it's a European language. And it's really funny because I think I was asking a, 
like a moral moral kind of question, you know, like, you know, should we, you know, urbanize and wildlife, something like that, I've, I've really forgotten. And he gave a different view and it's an oppos opposing view. You know, he said, I don't think, you know, we should do this. So it was a bit awkward, but then we just managed to kick it out. And then we started talking about K-pop. He, he likes K-pop. He does all the dance covers. Yeah, and then like, we just, we just compromise. We just understand each other better, which I thought was really cool. Like, you know, that's how I, I hope that most of our conversations will go. You know, with people with differing views, you know, we don't attack. Let's just try to understand each other, understand our priorities. And oh, there's this guy from Iceland. Oh my goodness, Iceland. <gasps> oh, Iceland. Yeah, so it was really nice, very sweet message. Um, and yeah, so this one, uh, I have a media godfather who, who, and I'm his media goddaughter. It's really cute. Like he, he is a big fan of us. He comments on a lot of our videos almost regu on a regular basis. So it's really cute. It's, I think it's quite old from his profile photo. So I, I'm happy that I'm getting elderly on board as well. And oh, Bernard. So I think you, some of you guys may know Bernard. Like he, he takes picture. He's in charge of Sungai Bulo, he takes picture of a lot of authors and I, I followed his page a lot and I'm a big fan of him. So when he posted this comment, I was like, whoa, yeah, Bernard. Okay. Then third one, um, this is actually the mother of my student that I teach. So um, when they graduated, I showed them my, my channel. They were slightly less impressed, you know, than I thought they would because they are all very young. They are all on TikTok already, you know. So Facebook is like, eh, so old people, you know, like, okay. Yeah, but you know, I mean, their moms, I think they still do Facebook and it's very sweet. She became a patron. So patron is where you can actually donate any amount to content creators online to help support their work. Yeah, so she actually became my patron. It was really sweet. Um, this one, oh, so super cute. So there's this kid, he loves my video. Oh, he, he types a lot, yeah. Then he's like, I want to be a YouTuber like you, but my mother don't, don't want me to show my face. And then he, he took this video that he like, you know, pretended to be Bago MJ. And he was at the Botanic Gardens. He's asking for my advice and feedback, which I did tell him like, in an equally long message. But super, super cute. And um, this is where I start to feel an impact. Like as of now, like, when our following gets bigger, we actually can do stuff that has a greater impact that actually will help the issues that we are currently facing. So uh, this vaccine talk that I recently did, um, I'm just a moderator, but I think they, they just want his Bio Girl NJ character and keep it lighthearted. And to show everyone, you know, it's not that scary, it's make it more relatable. And we also did a video on the vaccine, how it works. And yeah, and I got really nice comments on YouTube. And this is very sweet, you know, are you not monetizing your videos? So when you watch you know, ads on YouTube, right? Uh, the money actually goes to whoever who posted the video. I mean, I'm not sure if you guys know about that. <laughs> yeah, so for our videos on YouTube, we don't have ads. And then he was like, I will watch, let me watch all your ads just to support you. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. But yeah, I'm just really nice. And I, we actually did a DIY hand sanitizer workshop for free during the, before the COVID really blew up. La. So it was really happy. La, I really want to do something like sort of to give back to society in a way. Like I just really want to do something, you know, see how, what we can do on our very first workshop. And I was a judge on this homeschool science fair. I know I'm really tiny here. So all these kids, they are homeschool and they have this science fair where they submit a video that they do. So I was, I was one of the judges, it was really fun, like watch all the videos, giving them comments and how they can improve on it. And last but not least, like, oh, Tanjan Singh Safai, yes, the Speaker of Parliament. Yeah, so this is when I brought him on like just an urban wildlife exploration to show him how the wildlife actually adapted to the urbanized surroundings in Silat Canal. So it was his district. So I think it was nice that we could ask him. And he's a speaker, so he speaks really well. And yeah, it was really nice. I think he was very happy. I mean, he was impressed also by the amount of wildlife that he could find. Yes. And that's all. Oh my goodness, it's 8.40. But I hope you guys enjoyed the short presentation. So this is us. I hope you guys can join us in our journey also to you know, get people interested, changing heart and minds. And hopefully it will be the bridge, you know, if you guys are, any of you guys are doing your own content, you're sharing your own knowledge. Um, if it's not attracting, I hope that, you know, once they get the interest and spark from us, they will come to you. And check out your stuff that you the stuff that you do and the work that you guys have been doing. Yeah. So that's all. Thank you everyone. Awesome. Thank you again, MJ. That was a very fun talk. And I think a lot of people are taking notes on how to like better their science communication via social media. 
So yes, a lot of tips. Awesome, awesome. Uh, we will grab questions now. Uh, I'm going to look through my chat first. Marcus, do you have questions on your side? Uh, maybe I'll go with the first question. Uh, I didn't catch any, but um, maybe I'll ask a question I wanted to know. Um, for the Tomasic um, moderation se session with, with the, for, the, for the vaccines, how did you prepare uh, for, the, for the session? Prepare? Uh, I'm not sure if any of you guys uh, have actually watched it. So I was just a moderator, but wow, we, I think we took really long. Just I was so nervous. Um, so we actually came up with a set of questions. I mean, we want to encourage people to get vaccinated and um, so there's a lot of fear going around. We just want to address those fears and share the signs so that, you know, it's actually not, not what you think. You know, you don't inject the virus in your body. So I actually went online to find all the comments from Facebook because I don't want it to be just all oh, the questions. I, I, I just, we just thought of it ourselves. You know, I, I want to get the, from the, what people are really worried about talking and you know where best to get it other than social media, you know, Straits Times comments where everyone just scolding everything <laughs> about their life there. So actually I went there to get all, you know, the complaints of everyone. And then, wait, let me see if I can show it here. The virtual background, ah, like, you can see oh, something like that. Can you see my, my screen? Yeah, so actually I, I actually have examples of people giving the comments and then, you know, I turn it into a form of question and that's where we pose it to the uh, experts. And I think people, people enjoyed it because they know I, I didn't just come up with questions myself. It's people, you know, is that side effects, that kind of thing. <laughs> people are really worried about these issues. So yes, that's how we did it. I'm not sure if this answers your question. Yeah, fantastic. It's a good, good way to harvest the, the internet hive mind and, and, and comment this. Yeah, what do you, Kanan? Okay, so I haven't found any questions. It's literally just everyone going uh, again and again. That's literally all of the chat. And uh, yeah, yeah, I've got no questions on my side, but I want to know uh, what has been your favorite video so far? For you to shoot. Uh, thank you. Oh, there's so many. How? Mm, okay, I mean the the time transit was really cool. First, you, you know, he had like bodyguards, and I was like, oh, is that a real gun? They're like, yes. Oh, you got a real gun. Okay, so that was one. But um, the moment where I felt really happy was uh, we did you know the crap video that went uh, a bit viral. Mm -hmm. So we did it with crap levels fun, and we did it. Just late to zero one. We didn't start too long, so our following wasn't very big. Uh, so we're just going around, um, collab collaborating with people. And this guy from Crab Lovers Farm, Uncle Sam, ah, uh, Uncle Sam, he was really nice. He just you know brought us in, he rang us around for, and he was really nice. He gave us all the information. He let me try a soft shell crab. I mean, you guys see the video, like soft shell crab. You know, soft crabs are like just mold, freshly molded crabs out of any species, and the. So after the video uh, went viral, um, like I think he has been in the industry for 20 over years. He's seen profits, but it wasn't the, the profits that he wanted to see. At least that's how I feel like he was really working very hard. But when the video got viral, um, he appeared on newspapers. He was the, the headlines of the Chinese newspaper. His business really boomed a lot. And everyone knows why everyone wants to go to his farm to learn more to get the crabs. And then that's when I realized, oh my goodness. Like our video had an impact and it's not just, you know, awareness or something, it's economy. <laughs> I helped this guy flourish his business and I was really happy because he was really nice to us. He just took us in, give us free food, just bring us around, letting me catching like prawns in the mud pit. And usually like people can't do that. Like, I'm so sorry guys nowadays, like they, he won't allow like participants to do that, but you know, I was the lucky one. And then I was really happy that, you know, our first video, first viral video actually helped somebody in his business. So that I'll say what is my most memorable and happiest video that I've ever made. <laughs> That's great. Uh, in fact, it was from your video that I learned that soft shell crabs were not a species. They were just pretty what? much naked crabs. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I always thought there was like some soft shell species going around or soft shell group of crabs. But yeah, then I realized they were like uh, 
freshly molted ones. Yeah, that's uh, another Pondu. example uh, of impact right there. How about we do um, mm -hmm. one last question? And there are actually lots of questions that have come up in the last couple of minutes. How about we do one last question? And if MJ is going to stay to the end, we could uh, get other questions answered if, if you are staying to the end. Mm -hmm. How about that? All right. So, uh, yeah. Which one do you want to pick, Marcus? Uh, the first one, maybe. First one, first one, first one. Oh, up to you. All right, Randall wants to know, yeah. Randall wants to know, do you have any pro tips for spotting or filming reptiles? Hmm, I have to say reptiles is not my, my niche area. Uh, this, you would have to go to, you know, the Herpetological Society of Singapore. So there are this group of really passionate um, there's researchers, there's students, there's guides inside, and they, they actually know a lot about reptiles and amphibians. So they are the ones that really spot uh, and take photos of them really well. So we did a video with them um, on Pasir Ris Park, you know, and snakes in general. And I've been going helping with some of the friends there. And what I can say is that reptiles, they definitely do not like dry, you know, when the season is dry, basically. So, you know, when there's a period, there's no rain, right? And if you go out trying to spot them, right? It's really difficult to find them. Oh my goodness, you can't find them at all. So it's best to go when, after the rain actually is the best, or at least during season where, you know, it rains occasionally. Nighttime, definitely. I mean, if, I mean unless you want to see um, reptiles that are diurnals. If not, right, most of them, they actually like to go at night because that's where you usually see more. And they are usually hiding. So <laughs> one good tip is to follow someone who actually knows where to find them. Where to spot them actually. If not, like you could end up not spotting anything, which is a bit sad. Yeah, but that are uh, there's some of my tips. So I'm sure you, there are people that who are interested in this as well. You can go on to Nature Society and see who's, or you can just go HS page, HSS page. So because they have nature guided walks, so you can follow them and they're gonna find a lot of cool things for you. Awesome. Thank you, MJ. Uh, I hope that answers the question, Randall. Like, I'm, I'm really bad at spotting snakes, right? Like, you got to hold my head and show me the snake. It'll take me five minutes to so go, ah, uh, <laughs> so yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, MJ, if you want, you can continue answering questions down in the chat. We will move to the trivia session now. So, give me a second, oh, wherever that is. Share so, screen. I think MJ has to stop sharing screen so Tanan can share the oh! screen. Yeah. Yeah, Wait, let me stop sharing. Okay, actually, you can stop it's no, no worries. I, I've already swapped it. Don't worry oh, about okay. it. Yeah, got you covered. Got you covered. Okay, so we will be moving so, on uh, to the trivia yeah. next. And I'm going to paste the trivia um, link again for everyone right here. So if you are interested to play the trivia, it's very fast, maybe about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, just fill in your... Uh, team name as well as your selected beneficiary on the live trivia sheet. I see people starting to go there and we will begin in a uh, few minutes. Uh, meanwhile, we'll talk about the rules. How do we play trivia? Uh, you could, everyone is encouraged to make a $1 donation if you are playing. Uh, the, num the number to donate will come up again at the end. So this is uh, this pay now number or PayPal. And the trivia will consist of four rounds. And today's team is M-A-R. And what do the letters mean? will be reviewed in a bit. But the last round would be a bonus round. And um, there'll be an honor code. Uh, you're not supposed to check your answers on the internet or any books, but you can team up with people in the, in the chat room, uh, in the Zoom room, if you have their uh, contact details or by chat. Um, to play together. And at the end of the session, um, you have to take a photo of your answers. Either you write it down or you type it out and send it to us via email, right? So this is how we uh, verify here, the winners, right? So I see two more teams being added, uh, Chawang the Elephant, Fishy, in addition to Hop and SSW, the RPL. So, um, We'll have that settled before we start the first round. All right. Um, you've got the, yeah, okay. So you guys can still continue signing up while the game is going on. Suppose you find people. Try to keep your teams to about three to four people, but you know, because of that, you know, like 
it's an input distribution. MJ, are you playing? Can I play? Because they don't got my question, right? Hmm, that is true. Okay. I mean, <laughs> there's, still, there's still a few other questions you can play for, so you have. All right. So for the first one, M is obviously MJ. So these are the questions given by our speaker today, MJ. Question one. What is the most popular social media app used by Gen Z? What is the most popular popular social media app used by So Gen Z are people who are 6 to 24 years old. Ugh. Any Gen Z? <laughs> I'm out of the bracket. Uh, I Gen Z, I Gen Z. <laughs> Facebook, B. Okay, good for y'all. Uh, they're rubbing in our faces, Marcus. A, Facebook, B, Instagram, C, Twitter, D, TikTok. What is the most popular social media app used by Gen Z? Anyways, if you guys need me to go through any of the questions, just shout at us in the chat and we will go back to it. I think it's MySpace. Yep, Greta, you have it. I'm sure, I'm sure it's, yeah. <laughs> Second question, how many percent of the firms in Singapore are headed by female CEOs? How many percent of the firms in Singapore are headed by female CEOs? A, 15%, B, 30%, C, 45%, and D, 60%. Yeah, I mean, I had a Friendster account and uh, I transported all of my Friendster friends to Facebook. Big mistake. Because suddenly I just had a bunch of randos that I had to like cull over the two years. So, yeah. Same way for living testimonies, you should, you know, do it for the rest of us as well. Thanks. Question three How much can a Tesla car, the Model 3, Safe per year in terms of fuel compared to current cars. How much can a Tesla car Model 3 save per year in terms of fuel compared to current cars? A, 400 Singapore dollars. B, 800 Singapore dollars. C, 1,200 Singapore dollars. Or D, 1,600 Singapore dollars. 400, 800, 1,200, 1,600. How much can a Tesla car save in terms of fuel compared to current cars? All right, moving on to A, which is AstraZeneca. Zeneca. Give me a second. Sorry. Right. Um, That's back for, for you, Gretel. Yeah, it's the it's the it's one of the brands of vaccine that we got now. You know, now we got so many of them. The AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine has recently come under the spotlight in the news after people reported a reaction. Well, I think Kanan has frozen. So after people reported reactions to it. So what is the partner institution? The partner institution, with, yeah. institution that works with Astra... AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca. So Zeneca, the yeah. name of the institution. Base, no, there's only like 300 something countries in the world and probably about 3 million institutions so not that difficult and I had to find a picture where like it didn't show so anyway. <laughs> right moving on the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine works using a weakened version of a common cold virus from another mammal. What is this mammal? A, horseshoe bat. B, camel. C, chimpanzee macaque. Which of these mammals was the base for a common cold virus of which AstraZeneca the
I could not find a picture where where these four animals were in like a thing. So I was like, let's find this one. But then there's a very macaque like monkey there as well. So is this a clue? Is this not a clue? Who knows? Draw my own. Same way, you'll never be able to discern what the animals are. You have too much hopes for my art. Yeah, horseshoe bed is a real thing because the no sleeves looks a bit like a horseshoe. The AstraZeneca, <clears throat> excuse me, the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine approved is approved for use in Singapore. True or false? The AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine is approved for use in Singapore. True or false? Uh -huh. You'll notice if you watch MJ's Just Keep Thinking channel or the vaccine, uh, the Masik yeah. vaccine so, program. And if you get this wrong, right, MJ will know that you don't follow her or you don't watch her content and she will hunt you down. I like how this little bottle has just got COVID-19 vaccine on it. It's like the most thing. It's like going to a kitchen and labeling your salt as salt or pepper as pepper. <laughs> and the last one is resistance. R for resistance. Question one, what is the SI unit for electrical resistance? What is the SI unit for electrical resistance? Is it Mo or is it Ohm? Is it Delton or is it Newton? I saw Gretel uh, waving her hands up in exasperation. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sidway, the, the last question on the vaccine was, as of today, is the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine approved for use in Singapore? Well, well unless uh, they changed their mind within the last four hours of me making the quiz and stuff, so yeah. I didn't realize that Mo and Ohm is opposite. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. They are. But you know what? I did not make any of them up. They're all real stuff. They're real SI units that I use. All right. Second, see, it was not all about electrical resistance. Which film franchise is an animated television series entitled Resistance? Is it A, Madagascar, B, The Lion King, C, Star Wars, D, Robocop? Which of the franchise, following film franchise as an animated television series for instance? Because like, it's the end thing now to make animated series after movies. Like, has anyone watched Camp Cretaceous based on Jurassic World? It is so good. Totally will recommend. It's on Netflix. Go watch it. Yeah, that's really good. The season three is coming out soon. Ray says it's on Wonder Vision. Yes, Ray. Wonder Vision is. Wonder Vision is so good. Okay, well, is that was, why was there so was a good. reference to Vision in MJ's slide just now? Oh, someone! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah. All right, last question. In England, what? Oh wait, my. In England. What in certain areas have evolved resistance that allows them to consume up to five times as much poison as normal blank without dying? Which of these following animals resistance to they are poison in England? Is it pigeons, gulls, rats, or slugs? Uh, yeah, uh, because both the blanks are the same animal. I just copied the entire sentence and just removed the animal names. So, yeah. 
I mean, it's not going to be like two different animals, right? So yeah, are we going to compare like that? So both the blanks are same. Pigeons, gulls, rats, or slugs have teeth. to poison in England. Okay, uh, so for those of you who are playing for the first time, uh, we will go through the answers now, mark your answers, and then you can uh, hold on to them for the next section where we'll go to the bonus round, which will, would have been a question based off. So MJ's answers. TikTok is apparently the most popular social media app for all the young uns in Zen Z. TikTok is the most popular social media app. And 15 are headed by female CEOs. And a Tesla car Model 3 can save you 1,200 Singapore dollars in terms of fuel compared to current cars. $1,200. AstraZeneca. Oxford University is the partner institution with Astra for this vaccine. This was the one that some British people were like, oh, you should put the Union Jack sticker on it so we know it's British. So yeah. And I know a few of my friends in the UK did not want to take any other vaccine except for this one until it came out. So I don't know how that's going for them. And the chimpanzee was the animal from which a, weak, a weakened version of a common cold virus was extracted and used for this vaccine. Chimpanzee. Mm -hmm. Which is different from uh, the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine, which uses mRNAs. I think Kanan, you're cutting this in and out for me. Oh, oops, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's the it's the connection. So for those who yeah. can't hear, uh, Kanan as well. So it's false. The AstraZeneca COVID nineteen vaccine has not been approved for use in Singapore. Only two vaccines are approved for use in Singapore, which is the Moderna and the Pfizer. Yep. Uh, resistance answers. Ohm is the SI unit for electrical resistance. Ohm is the SI unit for electrical resistance. And Star Wars resistance is the guy looked a lot like Ben 10 with his green jacket and everything. But yeah, uh, Gretel Mo was actually a resistance for something else. I cannot remember what it was. I'll check and let you know later. Well, it's actually conductance. So it's the opposite of resistance. That's more. Uh, that makes sense. So conductant versus resistant. And last one, rats in certain areas of England have uh, developed resistance to their poison up to five times as much as normal rats would without dying. So watch out UK, here comes a rat. Yeah, so I- And here we go on to the bonus round. Right, which I will explain. So uh, the bonus round is where you can catch up. So please uh, put on the Google Forms your marks for the first three rounds. And I see the numbers coming in. What? So there's a three-way tie uh, of six <laughs> points, it seems. Well, so this is where you can catch up. So tally up when we your points. Most of you have already done that. So you, how you play the bonus round is that there'll be one question and you gain the number of points um, for your wager uh, if you are correct for the question. So you can wager from uh, up to one point uh, to, uh, to a maximum number of points you have. and But if you get it right, let's say if you have six points and you wager six points, you get 12 points. But if you get it wrong, you lose the number of points you have. So if you have six points, you wager six points, you get zero points, right? So I see that all teams have filled up their wager and um, everyone has wagered the maximum number of points they have. So 
uh, I see playing brave, playing brave. Yeah, Hawk. I don't know if you are playing, but uh, you can still uh, we can still play and fill up your your points and your wager as we go on to uh, the bonus question. Yeah. What was what animal was featured in Just Keep Thinking's first video? What animal was featured in Just Keep Thinking's first video? Yep. Uh, MJ Ooh. mentioned this. Yeah. MJ yeah, mentioned this in the talk. Third, never listen. Who never listens? Yeah, third icon from the left in the <laughs> puzzling slide. That looks like a lung. Remember? Uh, uh, spelling? Nah, it's fine. We will not. Uh, we will not take into consideration spelling. She mentioned, I think, in passing once. So if you were listen, you would have picked it up. Yeah, it's it's, it's alright if if you don't get it spelled out. If we know what it is, it's cool. Or Ray hmm. saying the animal wasn't exactly featured. Oh jang, yeah, jang, jang. Jang, jang, jang. What animal made the thing though? She clue. She went to um, Pony Island to film it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. As everyone, uh, shall we move on, Marcus? Uh, yep. So. The first animal that was well somewhat featured is the Baya Weaver. The Baya Weaver was what MJ went looking for in Just Keep Thinking's first video to Coney Island. Yep, it made the nest that looks like a lung, the weave woven nest. So I see two people have already got the bonus question right. And I see the life form coming in. Waiting for just one last team, which is Uber. Team Uber. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Whose um, beneficiary is WRSCF. By the way, MJ, if there is like a two way or three way tie, you will need to host a tiebreaker impromptu. Like, ask a question. Yeah, if there's one, yeah. Then we kind of, like, see who answers it right or something. Oh, it looks like we need a tiebreaker because SSW, the RBL, and Uber are tied for 12 points each. Okay. So what's it going to be? Yeah, I just asked a question now. Uh, actually, you can both the... Can Spokespeople for both the teams, unmute yourselves and make yourselves known. So we will see who answers first. Hello. I roll. Yeah. Hello. Oh, wow. It's Gretel and Sinway. Yeah. Right. So sticks are high because um, the beneficiaries are read out their beneficiaries. SSW, the RBL's beneficiary is JGIS, which is Jane Goodall Institute Singapore. While Uus Bert's beneficiary is WRSCF, Wildlife Reserve Singapore Conservation Fund. Both okay. very deserved beneficiary so um what uh, I think, uh, so the first one to answer gets it right first one to answer correctly gets it okay so yeah go on mj okay uh i'll ask something that is it appeared in my video before that's the only thing that comes to mind okay so they will just answer vocally yeah yes they will okay okay so which GRC did Tan Chuan come from? Marine Parade. Oh, oh, I think, I think it's Uwu it. Bird. <laughs> yeah, I think, was, I think Gretel went first. Yeah. Oh, so sad. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I heard Gretel first. Marcus, what about you? Same Uwu Bird. So, um, yeah, I heard Gretel I heard first. Still away just a fraction. Yeah, of just love you. <laughs> yeah, well done, though, both, both teams. So I think the unofficial winner is Wu Bird. Uh, well done. We, we, we send us Ooh. your answers and we'll check your answers and we will um, finalize that this weekend. Yeah, just uh, send them or uh, take a photo or text your answers to the email address and update your scores as well. Well done. Thanks for playing. And also, if you guys want to donate more, you can continue to do so. And uh, over the weekend, once you've decided everything, we will make the donation to WRSCF. 
Yeah. Meanwhile, check out um, the Just Keep Thinking YouTube channel. I've pasted the answer there. So this is where you can catch up with the videos. From the get her Patreon, though. Hmm? Does she have a Patreon? Does she has a Patreon? Yeah, yeah, we, we do. It's on Facebook. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's on Facebook. I would go quickly grab the link and paste it in, too. Marcus, you forgot group photo. Not yet. No, we're not done yet. <laughs> just, just a couple more minutes, guys, and we'll do. So when Marcus is looking that up, uh, so we do not have a speaker lined up for the next one yet. It's been quite difficult to find speakers and stuff. And uh, since uh, signups have been quite dull, so what we're going to do is we are going to have a gap. Uh, the gap is going to be bigger. So previously we used to do every fortnightly, but now we are thinking about shifting it to monthly. So we're going to look at doing monthly videos now instead of fortnightly sessions, and then we'll see how it goes. So when the next speaker is ready, we will let you know, uh, as usual on Facebook. So if you're not following our Facebook, go follow us on SG STEM. It's a page, I think, or, I'm not too sure, but uh, hashtag SG STEM and uh, watch us there for future videos and updates or, or just memes. You know, I've been trying to do some memes there, but usually I forget or because the memes are already somewhere else. Yeah, uh, the SG STEM group is there as well on Facebook. So it's just keep thinking Facebook, go follow them as well. And uh, hopefully uh, MJ will do a video on civets and she will scream for us like the civets do. Uh, thank you, you guys have been awesome. And uh, we will probably catch you soon. Sound, I will send it to you. <laughs> yes, Kelly has sample sounds. Maybe Kelly, you should share it on our Facebook page so everyone else can get in on it. <laughs> Uh, so for people who are still staying behind, if you guys want to like switch your cameras on, maybe throw on a filter, we will take a Wi-Fi as we always do. Yep. Oh, and I see who Bio D Guy LJ is <laughs> showing himself. Yeah, so do switch on your cameras. Uh, we give everyone some time. Just uh, put on your cameras before I take a group shot of everyone. Oh, oh someone's got a pigeon. Yeah. Lee Wilson has a nice uh, pigeon mask. Yeah. <laughs> How like, do I change the... It's all cool whatever. here. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, Jim, hi! Jim, hi! <laughs> oh, sorry, okay. uh, for the questions that were in the chat, right? Where do I... How do I reply? And I actually have them to hear. We, we could ask the questions after we took. Uh, we ask you the question after after we take the selfie, perhaps. The oh, okay. Yeah. So it'll be in the video, and people who watch the video, they will know the answers. So yeah. So if, if people want to leave after the Wi-Fi, it's fine. Then we'll just get all the answers from MJ. Okay. okay. So um, Wi-Fi taken in three, two, one. Alrighty. Awesome. Two. So we'll go straight to the question. This is from um, Hok Jin Poon. He asked, how would you talk to your uninterested peers about the environment without sounding too preachy? Ooh. I actually, actually wrote down all the answers on the... <laughs> oh. I thought I was like, am I going to copy? But it's okay, so I can just share it straight hmm. from here. Um, I think that's, that's a really very good question. Uh, what I realized is usually, if, you know, your friends know that you are in this field, they don't dare to tell you a lot of things. So, which is why I actually hear from my friends, like, you know, all, all my friends are interested. But uh, that's not what I got from my friends who, what, they just tell me everything. <laughs> so I think first of all, we have to let them know that we won't judge or preach them if they actually share their views. Um, and so that they were willing to share how they truly feel to begin with. Yeah. And so actually, there's one case, like a friend of mine, we were ordering food, and she spotted this pigeon outside. Yeah, it was just a rock, rock pigeon, and she was telling me how ugly and dirty they were. <laughs> she was quite rude, lah. she was like, hey, Mati, all this kind of stuff, right? So ugly, and I was like, mm. and I, I just laughed it off, actually. And then I just shared random facts. Hey, you look at their nose, right? They have this bulgy thing. I don't know what it does, I'm so sorry, but yeah, <laughs> they have a bulgy thing. And they can appear in different colors, you know, sometimes pigment loss, and Actually, if you spot the rare albino one, you know, one is pure white and red eyes, it looks very pretty. So I just started sharing random facts and she was 
very intrigued by it. And to me, that was good enough, you know, it, you know, it shifted from, a, you know, oh, I look at them so ugly, so dirty, to a, oh, so interesting, that kind of thing. You now I want to see the albino one, and then, so um, we don't have to change their mindsets immediately, because when you try to do that, right, you realize you can't, <laughs> and you will shun them away. They'll be like, oh, just care a lot, I'm not going to talk kind, so, something like that, like, I would say, they won't dare to share, and then, you can just start by sharing more, getting them interested, uh, you know, now, COVID, you can't fly anywhere. Um, just suggest to go for a hike, attract a some guy below, and then when they when you spot these cool animals, like tell them about it, and then you can get that interest going. Then you'll find it much easier. Yeah. So that that's how I do my students and my friends as well. And it's important to know that you may not be able to convince everyone, and that is okay. You know, at least you try. They listen. It's still better than people who don't actually get to hear what you have to say. So yeah, that's my. It helps. That's my tip. <laughs> Show oh. Barbara and video. Yeah. So by the way, the 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 bulky part of the pigeon's big. It's called the cree, C E R E, and <gasps> most people, I think, they, we don't really know what 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 the function is for a pigeon. But for many birds that have a cree, mm. uh, it might be for signaling, uh, a show of sexual dimorphism or sexual quality. So like a a budgy series. Mm. The males are blue. The females are brownish. And it might the difference and brightness of the color might be uh, for signaling purposes. Right. Uh, Yay, Marcus Vasily. Woohoo! Uh, Joshua's uh, question is how do you do special effects like in the cartoons? Ah, that, <laughs> that would actually is a question for my co-founder. So he does the video editing, he has a background in it. Uh, it's actually just a 2D animation video effect, and we probably need a special software for it. I'm not sure what. Yeah, I'm sure you can Google it and find out. And it's it's a specific skill you have to learn. So it's just like how you need to learn how to edit your videos, you need to have the software, how to learn Photoshop to create graphics and all. Uh, you probably need to invest time to learn the software to create it. But actually you can do simple ones on PowerPoint. I do that for my own lessons. So I, I create my own science video, but it's, just, it's not the Barium J, it's the you know, experiment you call this in the beaker and stuff. So I will actually create really cute animation that actually can move and the fireworks animation you see, yeah, that, that's one of it. So if you are looking for really simple, you can actually YouTube it. You can use your animation and then you convert it to a video format. And or even not videos, you can just the drawing, can, you can stick it into your videos. Yeah. But if you really want the more up, higher level kind, I, I, I think you got to learn it from somewhere. You know? Like you don't mean, oh no, I should stop promoting all this brand. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Ray has responded in the chat saying that he uses uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects and also Photoshop and Illustrator to create. Ah, Excellent. Expert, yep. supreme so leader. First question from Sin Wei is that what is an advice you can give for aspiring uh, video or content creators uh, for environment or, or nature mm. causes? Mm, I would have referred to the three tips that I gave just now. So um, what is your goal in your in, in content that you're trying to do? Uh, what are you good at and who are you targeting? Um, so there's, so for, for just keep thinking, we, we want a following because of the goals that we have. So because that we want a following, we, for the, we want to attract this target audience. There are certain ways that we do things that you don't see in other, in other people maybe. So like our information is, Lighthearted, it's, it's not full, it's not too much. And sometimes, you know, we will get like, you know, uh, like, for example, the turtle tortoise, they're like, actually, not all turtles do this, not all tortoises do that. And I was like, yeah, we know, but you know, when we start to put more, then people won't even bother reading it. So it depends a lot on who you're trying to attract. But however, you just want to have, you just want to just share information in really knowledgeable, in a really scientific manner. So one example I can think of is uh, Riata, I'm sure most of you know her. So she, she has this big, super cool blog where she has all the information about marine wildlife. And she's, just, she's happy with that, you know, she just do her own thing. She shares real scientific knowledge and, you know, any of us can go there and, you know, learn more about it. So yeah, I don't think her aim is trying to be famous or getting a following. She just wants to, you know, do what she has been doing. And a lot of my friends, they, I mean, and like perhaps you're good at taking wildlife photos or videos. You can start doing that, like perhaps make a small wildlife documentary, which I know some of the people in Singapore, they are currently doing. 
and it really gets a lot of you know abuse and people really take notice of it and because of that people get interested in nature and they want to learn more so it really depends on you know what you're trying to do and then it, i mean if you want to make money out of it then that's a whole nother story <laughs> you have to think of a business model a business plan so uh, once you figure that out uh, just just learn more uh, recognize your strengths uh, exploit on that Learn more about other stuff to cover your weakness. In fact, you can try collaborating with someone else, find a friend, a partner who you can work with. Yeah, and just uh, just try, you know, never try, never know. Like, I would never expect just keep thinking to take off, like, until, you know, to this day. <laughs> so, that's my advice. Fantastic. Um, okay, one last question. Uh, this is from Gretel, and her burning question is, how long does it take to shoot a video? Ooh, it depends. So for our short ones, we have actually shot explainer videos like you know, endless versus on something like that. So uh, that's the setting is you know it's just within an enclosed environment. Um, that one could easily take one to two hours really quickly. But most of our videos because we shoot it outdoors, it will take two to three hours up to half a day. It really depends depends on how many people are involved, the location, what scenes we need. Yeah. So, and sometimes some videos, you know, you need the animal to do a certain, you know, to do something. Then if the animal doesn't do it, then oh, too bad, I <laughs> have to come back another day or you have to wait for the moment, you know, where you actually can capture it. Uh, videos like our marine type treasure hunts. So the low tide is, there's only a window of, you know, two to maximum just three hours. So yeah, we have to just film within this window so that, you know, that's up to nature. So it really depends. Yeah, but I would say a good three to half a day. But that's only for filming, lah. So you know the afterwards, the whole effects and the thing, it putting it together, that will take <laughs> a good week or so. Cool. All right. Thanks so much for spending time with us tonight and sharing, uh, giving us all the insights about social media, making videos, and uh, the journey for what's uh, just keep thinking uh, to today. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Nice to see you all. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. I think we all learned a lot. Super. So, well, see you all next time. Yeah, we will let you guys know when is the next one. And please do join us then. Have fun and have a great weekend, guys. <laughs>